Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. A clutter coach and professional organizer, Julie also offers tips to help you get clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Thanks to our sponsor, Assistant Angel, social media solutions for small and medium-sized businesses. Assistant Angel provides social media management and virtual assistant training. For more information, please visit assistantangel.com. So today we're going to be talking about our digital afterlife. And I'm sure a lot of you are out there are like, you know what, I have enough to worry about managing clutter when I'm alive. Why do I have to worry about it when I'm dead? And I'm with you, but think about it. We are so connected. I'm sure most of you have a bank account or a retirement account that's only done digitally. I have an account with, um, it used to be Ng, and they only have a few brick and mortar buildings. So what would happen if I were to die? What would my husband be able to do? There are also issues, I want to know what today's guest says about my great YouTube channel and all these wonderful interviews I'm doing. Does she say, get rid of them, or can they live on after I do? We're going to talk about that and much, much more today. And I'd like to Emily Parks founded Organized for Success in 2007 and specializes in productivity and technology for small business for both PC and Mac. She utilizes technology in business organization systems to help clients increase efficiency and output by creating customized plans to incorporate into daily operations. She provides one-on-one -on -one and team consulting in person or via Skype, Google Plus Hangouts, and Uvu. Customized workshops and trainings workflow processes, and how to organize your workspace. Hey, Julie, thank you for having me today. I would also add to your bio, you are my technology go-to, and when I need a gift for my husband, you are the woman that I call. Thank you very much. All right, so let's get started, because we have lots of good stuff today. Why do we need to be concerned about our Internet and social media life after we die? Can you share some of the legalities that you found? Absolutely. In today's society, both businesses and individuals have a digital footprint that's scattered widely across the internet. It includes emails, online banking, iTunes music libraries, social media profiles, web-based photo albums, online file repositories, blogs, and more. It goes on and on and on and on. Well, for physical items in our estates, it's very clear-cut about how things are handled when we die. We have a will, we have an ex executor for how that is handled, but for our digital assets, it's a much more legal gray zone right now. The U.S. Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986 makes it unlawful to, quote, intentionally access a computer without authorization and then obtain information from that access. However, on July 16th of this year, the Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Assets Act was approved nationally in the United States. And it's designed to let relatives have what access the deceased would want them to have. And that's what's important about this. It's the access that the deceased would want those relatives, loved ones, friends, whatever to have. As websites want to honor their privacy agreements that they are creating with users when we create our accounts, the legal system has also made clear its desire to respect the wishes of technology users, which is why it's imperative for all of us to convey what might be our wishes related to our digital assets. So how do we do that? How do we share our personal wishes? Activating an online guest book or turning a social media page into a virtual memorial? Until researching this, I, I mean, I love that idea, but I wouldn't have thought of that. Well. I'm certainly not a lawyer, and I do not have legal expertise, but I do see the importance of addressing my digital afterlife and have been doing extensive research and have talked to some lawyers about this. As such, first, I recommend creating a digital estate plan, just like you would create a will for your physical items. This digital estate plan details your wishes about what you want done with your digital assets. It would also appoint a digital executor because that's the person that's your point person with all of these different websites, with your email providers, with all of these entities to actually execute what you put in your digital estate plan. 
Can I ask a question about oh, yeah, that? Absolutely. So, do you mean by someone an executor? Do you mean they have to be attorney, or for instance, if you have a trustee, say for will, it could be a friend that you trust that's organized and won't lose it? Yes, it would be someone that you trust that won't flake out on you or whatever that can carry out what your wishes are with your digital assets. Okay. Thank you. It, 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 that, that was an excellent question because it's just like creating a will in the traditional sense, but it's focused on your digital afterlife. In addition, many estate planning lawyers are recommending that you put all of the details of your online account in what they call a veil. It's a virtual asset instruction letter. It's a legal document and it is created by the lawyer, but it would be stored in both a digital and a printed hard copy form within a fireproof home safe. I typically say, and I've heard from the lawyers, the fireproof home safe because if you put it in a safety deposit box, there's a delay in when your survivors are able to access that. Whereas if it's in a fireproof home safe, they can get to it immediately upon your death and be able to start carrying out what your wishes were. The key to the veil or virtual asset instruction letter is that you do need to make your your digital executor aware of its location and provide them with the passcode to get into your safe. Beyond, oh, yes. Yeah. Another question. Sorry, you're, this is all new to me and, and so I'm very curious. Is the veil something that we can easily find online or is that you know, they have those lawyer sites for $69, create your own will. Is it is it that type of document or is it something that you can just find or do you have to go to an attorney to have something official because probably it varies, I would think, maybe a little bit state by state in the U.S. It definitely varies state by state. Um, the, the digital afterlife is such a rapidly evolving world of legal right now that I would highly recommend that you go to a local lawyer to ask about this, primarily because there's only seven states right now that truly have in-state laws that are related to your digital assets in your afterlife, but your lawyers will know how these national acts are being carried out within your state and what's happening on a day-to-day -day and case-by-case -case basis. So I'm not aware of any like templates online or anything, I've been talking to lawyers themselves, and, and I would recommend that you go with your local lawyer for that. Thank you. You're very welcome. And speaking of lawyers, um, I, I do want to address your power of attorney, because it's important to, to tweak or update your power of attorney document, so it includes language specifically allowing your designated heir to access your emails, your electronic data, if you're ever incapacitated. So you may not be be dead, but you may be in a coma or something like that. And so all of the laws are, are your data being addressed by legal entities at that point in time is just as important as when in your afterlife. That's and, an excellent point. And it is state by state. So it, there, there's quite a variety between different states. So within the will that you already have, hopefully, or are creating for your physical assets, you would want to make sure that your digital executor is included as someone that is able to get a copy of your death certificate or else they won't be able to carry out what your, your, your wishes for all of your digital assets are. All right, excellent. Now I'm really curious about transferring online passwords, uh, especially for financial information because I think they're really strict about that. I know when my great uncle died, in a small town in North Carolina, so they knew him at the bank, but there was a little bit of a mix-up when my, my great aunt, and so when you go to access your safety deposit uh, at the bank, that's, you know, they have strict rules for that. So how do we transfer the online passwords? So accessing someone's, someone else's account, even after that person's dead, is still a bit murky from a legal standpoint. Um, but it's definitely an important item to address, particularly as so many of us are doing online bill paying, and so we don't get any of our bills in the mail anymore. We're just getting emails that address them. So you want to make sure that the deceased bills get addressed, so you have to be able to access their email. So there's still a lot of people that are maintaining their list of passwords in a paper book or a printed list, and while this 
may suffice on a personal level, it can be difficult to maintain and it is certainly challenging to share with your digital executor. So instead, I recommend using a password manager to generate, save, and autofill your passcodes. This will make life so much easier for your heirs because then they have one go-to place for all of your passwords and account information. And in fact, a lot of these online password managers uh, they come with apps that include a data vault. So not only can you have all your password information in the password manager, but you can have some key documents within it and, and data that would need to be accessed very quickly. Great examples of password manager options are LastPass, Flash ID, 1Password, and RoboForm, although there are tons of other options that exist. Alternatively, if, oh, go right ahead, yep. Yeah. Can you just explain for people who might not know, like, what is LastPass and what does 1Password mean? What do you mean by that? Okay, so these, you can go to their websites to create your account within them. And then once you've created your account, you would enter each of the websites on which you log into, as well as your associated username and password. However, they can also auto-create a password for you so that inherently as human beings a lot of times when we create a password it has some sort of connection to us however if you allow your password manager to generate that password for you then it's going to inevitably make sure that it's not connected to you it will also have capital letters lowercase letters symbols and numbers all mixed into it so it's a lot harder for hackers and um, do-no-gooders to access and break into with that in mind, the, the password manager is something that you can install onto your internet browser as well as any of your mobile devices so that each time you're going to log into one of these secure sites, all you have to remember is the password for your password manager. You no longer have to remember all those lists and lists of passwords for each of those individual sites because your password manager is remembering those. So the benefit to your heirs is that they only have to remember that one password for your password manager, which they can then log into from anywhere on the internet. Fantastic. A more streamlined approach to it. However, I know there are some people that are concerned about cloud-based technology. If you're uncomfortable with the cloud-based technology aspect of a password manager, you could utilize a password-protected memory stick or flash drive which you could put in that same fireproof home safe that we mentioned before. Outstanding. Now, I'm sorry I interrupted. You, were you able to finish your thought to the question? Yes. I, I think the big thing for people is options of how to convey that information to their digital executor, and each of these options provides them safety, stability, and some flexibility. All right, excellent. So what about social media accounts, and how do we delete those? Well, the approach to different social media platforms is going to vary depending on your desires as well as what each site offers. This has become quite the hotbed for legal activity. For example, Facebook actually altered its digital afterlife policy earlier this year, and uh, their policy now is to, to turn a deceased person's page into memorial mode. So they make it publicly available for people to post memorials and things like that. But shutting down a deceased person's Facebook page actually requires the user's birth certificate, death certificate, and proof that the person that is submitting the request is actually the lawful rep representative of that dead or the, the deceased user. So it's not it's not an easy process by any stretch of the imagination. On the other hand, Google actually offers what they call Google Inactive Account Manager. And that allows you to go into your Google account within your settings and choose a trusted contact. So I'm, I'm saying probably your digital ex here would be that person. But whoever this person is, this is who would be notified by phone or email when your account has been inactive for a specified length of time. You designate that within your Google account. And whoever you designate as your specific person in your Google Inactive Account Manager, they would then be able to get access to all of your Google accounts. So your Google+, your Gmail, your YouTube, 
your um, Google Photos, all of the different tools that are under your Google platform would be passed along through that Google Inactive Account Manager. Now, do you know if that gives you an option to have more than one person? Because I don't know just the way my personality is. Like, hopefully I will live a long life, so I will pick someone 50 years younger than me to deal with this. But you just never know what happens, and I don't know. Do you know about that? My understanding, and I, I'm not an expert on that particular aspect of it, but my understanding is that it, it is one person at any particular time, but you can always change it over time. So if who you de designate now is not who you want in 30 years, you have the ability to change that option. Excellent. But there's so many different platforms. Like Twitter offers a contact form to assist you in deactivating, but you can't transfer your account like you can on Google. Um, and for Yahoo, in America, Yahoo accounts are non-transferable but can be terminated after submitted a detailed request, whereas for Yahoo in Japan, they've actually created a, a program called Yahoo Ending where the, the Yahoo user is able to log into their Yahoo account and set up for an email that they've prepared to go out to 200 addresses at the time that they're, they're updating Yahoo as a deceased person. That email goes out to 200 email addresses and Yahoo opens what they're calling a memorial space bulletin board where people can come and leave condolences messages. It's not as cut and dry as just deleting accounts for someone who's passed away. Um, there's options for creating memorial pages. There's options for emailing the downloads of your data from those accounts. Uh, the most important thing in this process is to make sure that you convey what your wishes are to, to your heirs and your, your descendants so that they can carry out what you prefer. You might want to consider one of the many online afterlife companies. They pledge to store and then distribute after death your designated digital assets. Uh, you can specify your beneficiary. It's just like kind of creating an insurance policy that would then pass on to them. You're creating your digital insurance package. And whoever your beneficiary is would receive information from your account once you've passed away. Their asset lock, uh, Sears Legacy, Death Switch, uh, Dead Social. There's one that just started recently. It's called Entrust It where some 20-something year olds have been focusing on this problem and created that. Ifidie.org is one. Uh, some of the leaders in the, the online programs for this are Legacy Locker, Plan Departure, and Secure Safe. Still, I think one of the most interesting options thus far for this is a new startup that was founded by an intellectual property lawyer and a banker. It's called Perpetu. And if you sign up for Perpetu, you do it with either your email address, your Facebook account, or your Twitter account. Once you've logged into Perpetu, you'll see all these different services that you can dictate what you want to happen with them. So you get a list of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Dropbox, Flickr, Instagram, GitHub, and you pick what you want to happen on these when you die. So you could schedule a final wall post to appear on your Facebook profile and tell Perpetu that when you pass away, you want all of your Facebook posts, mm -hmm. your status updates, and your private messages to be sent to your selected someone, whoever that executor is. You can select your repositories on GitHub to be made public after you die and tell Perpetu to email a download of all your LinkedIn contacts to a colleague so that your company can continue working with those individuals. Most importantly though, unlike all of the online afterlife companies I mentioned before, Perpetu doesn't ever ask users for their passwords. Instead, you log in with your email or your Facebook or your Twitter accounts and you select what information is downloaded and sent to your designated individuals. So it's very unique and it's amazing how rapidly this is evolving and new options are arising and just it, it's, it's something that people are looking at with a much closer diagnosis than ever before.
That well, it's a new. I mean, social media has created not only with your digital afterlife, but a complete set of laws. Like how you defame someone on social media. I mean, there was a case not too long ago. I read about how someone um, low ranked them on um, on one of the like Yelp or a site like that, and they complained and sued them, and then they ended up counter suing. And they won, and I want to say it went to the Supreme Court or it went really higher up. But we are kind of in the wild, wild west with technology and everything that's going on. So it is an area to explore. I think I would want to use maybe haunt some people afterwards and make sure set up some emails so after I die that they get those emails. A great next subject to talk about. How do we terminate that, and how do we do that? I personally am not going to terminate my Yahoo account because I'm very cranky with them, and I'm going to subscribe to 10 million different email lists so that they it just explodes with spam email so that this their server goes down because they make me cranky with all the changes they've made. How do we do it for real? Well. Yes, it's definitely good to think about your email accounts, and I like that you have a strategy in mind for using your your digital afterlife to the benefit of of, of um, playing, making up for some of the pain and stress that you've experienced. Exactly. Uh, many individuals actually have their digital ex hears uh, to to monitor the incoming emails that come in for a while. Some you, they usually will put in their their plan that they leave for this individual exactly how long they want them to be monitored. You want to make sure there's no outstanding issues or folks that need to be alerted as to what's going on. At some point in time, though, a lot of people will switch to having an autoresponder go out from those email accounts, so that way nobody ever actually has to check them. You can set it up so that emails received are deleted from the server after X number of days, so it's not like you're worried about the email account becoming full, but your autoresponder would then allow people to that may not have heard from you or were not aware of what had happened to know what's going on. But there is always the option to delete the email account. If you use Gmail, your email is covered under that umbrella of the Google Inactive Account Manager. If you use Yahoo for email, that would be addressed in the detailed termination request that I mentioned before. If you get your email from Time Warner Cable or whoever provides your internet coverage, by ending that associated account, you'll automatically deactivate that email address. All right, excellent. Beyond that, it's going to vary from email provider to email provider. So, for example, my website is hosted through GoDaddy, so my email is with GoDaddy. So that would be included in my digital estate plan to address my GoDaddy account. Okay, wonderful. Now this brings up my other point, is my diabolical plan not going to be able to happen? Because what about unsubscribing from e-databases? Or is it, is it no big deal, or do they automatically unsubscribe you? Well, you are correct in that when you delete your email address or deactivate your email address, it's going to remove you from your the e database because um, when the company sends you emails, they'll bounce back to the company, and then the company will take the steps to delete any bounce backs from their e database. However, some people include unsubscribing in their digital estate plan because they want to make sure that they don't require companies to take that extra step of deleting their email from the bounce back. It, either way, you're going to get removed. It's on a case-by-case -case basis of which you prefer. If you if you have a very active digital executor that wants to really be very thorough, then unsubscribing would help on that. But you're going to get removed from those lists eventually, anyway, as long as your email account becomes deactivated. Fantastic. Now, what about identity theft? I mean, we have identity theft without digital, and you see all these people like anonymous just you know, are able to get into these databases, is that something we need to worry about? And what about the data clearinghouses like Intellis, Spokio, and People Finders? Oh, Julie, it is mind-boggling for me. I am constantly amazed by how many thieves are focusing their energies on stealing the identities of those individuals who have passed away. It's, it, it, it's quite sad, but it's definitely something that would need to be addressed in your digital estate plan. Alerting the various credit reporting companies, including Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, is important. 
they each have contact us areas on their website for starting this conversation, but they would definitely need to see a copy of the debt certificate. Further beyond the credit reporting companies, it can be helpful to consider those um, data clearinghouses you mentioned. Uh, all of them will need a copy of the death certificate, hence why it's important for your digital executor to have that documentation. And while your digital executor can call each of those and tell us both, both y'all, people finders, they would then have to fill out all the requested paperwork and it can be a very time consuming process. So I often recommend that just consider a program called Delete Me. And Delete Me will actually go through all the legwork for you. And so your digital executor doesn't have to worry about all of the paperwork, the phone calls, and everything involved in that. All right. Wow. I Gosh, I have a lot of homework to do after this interview. Ay, ay, ay. So what about, is there anything that you think is okay for us to keep alive? For instance, I love all my interviews and hopefully they're going to be in a bunch more places that besides YouTube. And so I, I think it's wonderful information. I'd like to keep it. What are your thoughts about that? I'm really glad you brought this topic up, Julie, because that actually is one of the areas that has made this a legal complexity because the answer varies dramatically from person to person and it depends heavily on what you feel exists in your digital portfolio that may carry some value. Uh, there was an example, uh, there's been several examples of bloggers or people that were active um, actively contributing articles, ebooks, things like that, that they didn't leave suggestions as to what to do with their content, their creative assets. They were all online, so it's not like there were printed books and things like that that could be dealt with. And so um, many followers find what those creative types are posting online to be of quite a bit of value and want those individuals to leave their blogs and whatnot alive online, but their families may have a different opinion and think this wasn't, you know, this was just my brother or my sister or my whatever. They're not an artist, you know, they had this full-time job, this was just what they did on the side, so they're taking these blogs down or they're taking this content down. So it's up to that creative person to leave the documentation of his or her wishes so that those loved ones that survive can properly fulfill leaving what that deceased would want left online. So I agree wholeheartedly. Your YouTube videos have great value, but you really need to convey to your heirs and through a digital estate plan exactly what you want to remain up. Um, websites are offering using users the option of opting into a memorial site upon death but it's important to denote those wishes in your digital estate plan. So your voice is the one that's guiding those actions when you're no longer alive, rather than people making assumptions. A popular blogger site or a gaming avatar that has acquired like significant status online or all these points can be worth real money, I mean actually cash money. So it's important to communicate what you want to happen to those digital, those, those digital assets so that their value can be maintained and so that the followers are able to continue to view and read the content and comment on it. That was what, there was a, a very famous blogger that her family, she had lots of followers, but her family didn't view that as anything really important because that was just a side gig that she did. They took them down and a lot of her followers are like, you know, we just wanted to continue that conversation with each other with her shared content. But she had passed away unexpectedly, so her family didn't know her wishes. Bottom line, be clear about what you want and communicate that effectively to others. I, I can't stress the importance of that digital estate plan. Well, I will just put a link to this video. I want to live on forever. Everything I want. Anything, don't delete it, and I want people to wear a purple and leopard print at my funeral. That's the other. Men can, they don't have to wear a purple or leopard print. They can come as is, but the women need to wear a purple or leopard print. Now, Emily, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share on our digital afterlife? Yes, a couple of different things. The first is to stay aware, because this is a constantly evolving situation. 
Um, there, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are national laws and acts that are being adopted on a national level that will impact local changes. So staying in touch with whichever local lawyer you pick to help you with your digital estate plan is hugely important because that person is going to be able to track what's going on and stay abreast of it. The, the United States government actually posted a blog post to tell people to create a social media will. So your digital estate plan takes that a step further and instead of just focusing on your social media is all encompassing. I really encourage everyone to take time to do an audit of what are your digital assets. You know, it's we have these lists of passwords, but we don't always think about our iTunes library or our Picasso pictures or whatever might be in existence that are scattered around and our footprints are very scattered and very widespread right now. So making sure that we take that audit, keep a thorough list and make sure to share that with others is important. I also encourage people to, there's a, there's a couple of really good websites. Um, Evan Carroll and John Romano have written a book called Your Digital Afterlife that has been a great resource for me, but their website, The Digital Beyond, is doing a great job of keep, keeping people abreast of what's going on with the Uniform Fiduciary Access to Digital Act, Assets Act, as well as any laws that are changing on a national level. Your legal contacts on a local level can help with how that's going to trickle down, but making sure that people are clear on what their digital assets are and what they want to do with them and then staying abreast of what the legal implications continue to evolve and change and become. Now, Emily, tell people how they can find more information about you and kind of a little more details about what exactly you do for people. So my company is Organized for Success, LLC. My website is organizedforsuccess.biz. And um, I'm actually going to be doing some elaboration on what we've talked about today next week on my blog. So stay linked up with organizedforsuccess.biz's blog. And as a productivity consultant, an office organizer, and a technology specialist, I partner with business professionals in order to help them get more done in less time, quickly find what they need when they need it, and tame their technology so that you are in charge of your technology rather than your technology being in charge of you. How many times do we come into an overflowing email inbox that sends us screaming the opposite direction? I help you make sure that doesn't happen, um, but technology is a big part of most people's lives. Work, playing, everything in between, and I want to make sure that it's a tool in your toolbox rather than just another something you have to deal with. And it only took Emily probably two or three years to get me in the digital age in some areas. So if there's, there's hope for me, there's hope for everyone. So I'd like to again thank our sponsor, Assistant Angel, who offers social media solutions for small and medium-sized businesses. Assistant Angel provides social media management and virtual assistant training. For more information, please visit assistantangel.com. And again, I want to thank Emily Parks from Organized for Success. Thank you, Julie. This has been great. All right, everyone, go out and clear some clutter and create the life that you deserve and choose. Bye now. Thanks again to our sponsor, Assistant Angel, social media solutions for small and medium-sized business. Assistant Angel provides social media management and virtual assistant training. For more information, please visit assistantangel.com. Thanks for joining us on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. You can find out more about Julie Caraccio and her services at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.